I overheard someone talking about their problems the other day. I had the worst day ever, they said. First, there was nowhere to park at Whole Foods, and everyone was acting all aggro, so I had to walk like two blocks in the rain, and my shoes got soaked. Then my stupid salad was like $12. Then I was in such a rush to get to yoga, I forgot my mat. I had to use some nasty loner mat, and it smelled like balls. I don't know what the big deal is. I love the way balls smell. I'm pretty sure Ben knows I'm dying. I'm not sure if it's the cancer or something else, but he's been taking me to all the places we used to go to and checking on me a lot. The other day he asked me to let him know when I was ready to go. He said he didn't want me to suffer. Growing up with Ben was pretty great. He made pictures for a living and didn't feel as comfortable in the city, so we traveled around a lot. He's what his hippie friends call a free spirit or something. We camped a lot. I'd pretend I was a giant stinky butterfly. I'd help Ben find girlfriends. We'd go shark fishing. We'd do yoga. I'd give him kisses. We'd hang out with famous people. We even went sailing in the desert once. Which brings me to a time in my life that I've always been a little self-conscious about. Of course, it's not my fault, but I became so handsome that it was impossible to ignore. When Ben started to notice, I had to start working for a living. Humiliating outfits became pretty standard. If you've ever been told to look cute, you know it's not as easy as it sounds. And you can't just fake special kisses in the studio. It won't look authentic. Oh man, those were the good old days for sure. I think most people would have left their old dog at home, but Ben insisted on taking me to all our favorite spots one more time. I think he feels like he can't leave my side right now. This one time, about 10 years ago, we were camping at Joshua Tree and Ben stood up by the campfire and just passed out and he started bleeding. Things changed a lot after that. When I licked him, I could taste the chemicals they were putting in him to kill the cancer, but it just seemed like they were killing him too. If anyone had tried to take me out of that hospital room, I would have bitten their face. I remember feeling really sad for Ben when he found out he'd have to poop into a plastic bag attached to his stomach for the rest of his life. Mainly because he already had to put all of my poop into plastic bags. The worst, though, was when this letter came from the insurance company. One time I had the best dream ever. I dreamed I had rabies and snuck into the insurance company to share my rabies with as many people as I could before they shot me with a tranquilizer gun. I don't know what I would have done without Ben. I'm so glad his cancer went away. I'd be so scared right now if I was going through this without him. I've been trying to be really strong for him this week. Just like he was when things were going really bad.
My last night was really peaceful. I wasn't hungry anymore, so I let Ben know it was time, and he let me sleep on his chest all night. Ben said a raven swooped by while he carried me to the vet's car in the morning. I'm sure his hippie friends had lots to say about that. There was this really smart scientist guy who thought that people could learn a lot from dogs. He said that when someone you love walks through the door, even if it happens five times a day, you should go totally insane with joy. Joy.